Well, hi everybody. Uh, my name is Shane. Um, our homestead is Clements Family Farms. And I'm getting ready to do a series on making vanilla extract the way we've been doing it for the last uh, 28 years or so. Um, the first part of the series is about choosing the alcohol for our vanilla extract and my opinions on it. I know there's a lot of new beginners out there and this is just some of the information that I've learned through the course of the years and and actually some of it's I've been learning in the last eight years too uh, has been really important because vanilla bean prices have gone through the roof so I had a couple years there where I didn't make it uh, now the prices are coming back and we've got some good people out there selling some good vanilla beans anyway let's talk about beginning alcohol beginning alcohol <laughs> beginning your extract with the types of alcohol and in my opinion um, I leave the hard liquors out because when I first started making vanilla extract I had to ask myself why am I gonna do this And the reason why I wanted to do it is because every time I was buying something vanilla extract on the shelf all I was getting was a chemical or an alcohol taste and I did not want that I wanted good strong vanilla flavoring not alcohol so I did some research family recipes grandma's um, and then what what people have been done in the history so the old history was a cheap vodka throw some beans in it put it in a jar throw it in a cool um, shelf dark shelf and shake it every now and then so that's where it all kind of was or it was an old whiskey <clears throat> so with you guys starting out with uh, vanilla extract or any type of extract a lot of you don't drink so you don't understand uh, what some of these taste or or how strong they are so the whiskeys and tequilas they're super strong alcohol content and they're above the 70 proof so FDA standard for an extract or a vanilla extract is 70 proof or higher um, so a single fold vanilla extract is 750 milliliters of a 70 proof or a higher vanilla or alcohol with three ounces of vanilla beans that will make a standard FDA single fold vanilla extract uh, to say you can use a lower proof yes you can use a lower proof like Malibu but you're not going to be within those standards and it's going to take you a long time so Make an extract is like um, you're, you're kind of detoxing the the bean itself and pulling it out of the out of the bean. The higher the content, the faster it's going to pull the the flavoring out of the bean. The lower the content, the slower it is. Um, so if you're if you're in that lower percentage or proof of alcohol, it's going to take you forever and you won't be within standards. So I usually just take that one off the shelf because I'm not going to use it. I use it for other stuff. So everything else here is higher proof. Um, tequilas, like I said, higher proof. Each one is could be smoother, but my your finished vanilla extract is going to have the alcohol bite to it. And I don't want that. So I stay away from the tequilas. Uh, same thing with the whiskeys. So um, so I really don't do that. I, I stick with between the vodka and the rums. I used to use a lot of vodka. And there are differences. We used to say, buy the cheap vodka. Okay, I did that. And my vanilla came out good. But it had that bite at the end that I didn't want and I knew there was room for improvement so I ended up going to a different vodka almost the same price but it didn't have that bite it just happened to be New Amsterdam is what I was using and it, it made a, a great 
extract because it didn't when the extract was done that bite wasn't there you got a killer vanilla flavoring out of it until I started exploring with the rums um, the rums have a little bit smoother uh, feel to them so you, you, my vanilla extract you can drink and you, you won't feel like you're drinking uh, a shot of whiskey or a shot of alcohol because uh, you're getting a good strong vanilla flavor to them. Um, so that's that's kind of where I, I went from vodkas to rums and, and the rums changed too. You can buy junk rum. Uh, so well let's talk about the moonshine a little bit. So moonshine will it, some of them don't have that distinctive flavor like the the rum or the whiskey or the tequilas they're they're I'm not a moonshine guy so I can't tell the difference when I when I drink moonshine or when I tried it before it's it's just too strong it's it's not what I like but I know some of you can't get regular alcohols and you've got maybe some friends in the area that are making moonshine uh, backwoods or in the garage and you can get your hands on it what I suggest is cut it down to 70 proof I think they're a hundred proof they might be a little bit more um, some guys will cut it down to 70 proof and sell it because they sell more of it when to set the lower proof ask them what the proof is and if they can cut it down because they you might be able to take this jar and once it's cut you'll have maybe a jar and a half or two jars out of it once they cut it down, depending on how strong the moonshine is. So th that is a possibility. I just don't mess with it. Um, I, I, I go right back to the rum. The, uh, the almond is the only thing I haven't played with. I, I do like the flavor of this. Um, and it's the only one that would really pair well with, with the vanilla. But again, this falls below the 70 proof, and I try to stay above the 70 proof for, this, for the FDA standards. I might try a little batch just for my own consumption, but when you're giving it to your friends and stuff, you, you really want to make sure you, can, you stay consistent with what you're doing, and you're staying within the standards to, to supply all the, uh, satisfy all those laws. Uh, let's talk about the spiced rums. I see people uh, asking about spiced rums or spiced whiskeys or even tequilas. You just have to remember some of the spices can overtake your vanilla. So if you want a really good strong vanilla, don't use spiced anything. Um, my recommendation is making a spiced extract on the side so you might take your spices and add them to your moonshine or add them to a non-flavored rum or vodka and make you a spiced uh, extract and then make your vanilla over here separately because you can ruin your vanilla by some of these spices some of these spices will overtake your vanilla and you'll, you're just going to waste your time and your money and all that because now you've got a vanilla flavored, actually you've got a spiced rum or a spiced whiskey with a vanilla flavoring to it. Why, why not just go buy it on the shelf? They make vanilla flavored whiskeys and all that. And the alcohol content's a lot higher. So yeah, you, I personally I just think you're wasting your time. So if you do make your extract, then you could take a little shot glass of your vanilla and then add your uh, spiced to it, little little drops at a time, and then mix it in and try it to get what you're what you think you're uh, trying to make. You can do it that way. That's the way I recommend doing a, a spiced vanilla or a flavored vanilla. Um, that way you don't you're not wasting your time or your money. So that's my take on these. I learned that the hard way, ruining vanilla and, and 
about nine months of my time because I'm pretty vigilant about shaking my jars. Uh, I leave them on the counter. So every day I come into my hobby room, uh, I shake them. And they vigorously I shake them every day, two or three times a day for the first four weeks. And then I might go every other day for another uh, couple weeks and then I kind of taper off because um, things start slowing down in there. Anyway, um, I ended up with my vanilla. So I, I sell um, 12 ounce bottles. These are my bottles of vanilla and I just I sell them to my friends and family uh, that are local. I, I don't sell them to the public or anything like that. But I ended up going to a coconut rum it's a 70 proof coconut rum by Captain Morgan. They do make an 80, let's see, 70, 80, 90, and 100 proof. So those are the things you kind of watch because they all look the same. It's just the coloring of the labels are different. They all are really smooth, but the alcohol content keeps rising. And I have done it where I thought, oh, I messed up this batch is different and I had to go back to my bottles and, and what I did what I did wrong um, so make sure you're getting consistent with your bottles you can use the the 90 proof or the 100 proof just make sure you know what that and it may um, have that bite at the end so I stick with the 70 proof as far as the coconuts concerned um, it's one of those mild flavors that doesn't overpower the vanilla. And what happens about six weeks into making your vanilla extract, the coconut flavoring goes away. Um, some vanilla beans are a little stronger and it may go away a little sooner or it, it may take eight weeks before the coconut goes away. But the coconut does go away. And what it does is it adds a little sweetness to your extract, which enhances the flavor of the vanilla. To me, it enhances the vanilla flavor. Because um, I've had extract that I've used, I, I had sitting on the shelf for five years, and I tried it with, with the old vodka and stuff. And I'm going to tell you, this is my absolute favorite. I will never change from this, well, it's been eight years since I've been using the coconut rum. I have changed brands. Now I only stick with the Captain Morgan because they're pretty consistent and I can find it on the shelves. And, and that was an issue too, is finding the, the same stuff on the shelves. But anyway, I've got this now. I buy it by the cases because I make anywhere between three to six gallons of, of vanilla each year. I bottle it up and give it to my friends and uh, it's, it's just wonderful. So that's where I'm at. I am in the process of making um, a couple batches of vanilla now and I'm going to make a, a, a video series on that. So there's my take on these alcohols. Um, they will all work at, at some degree but really what are you trying to achieve by doing all these different flavors and and spices and stuff unless you're sitting down taking little shots and taste testing all these at a different point I, I think it's just a waste of time uh, I make big batches and then from there you could take it and, and then bottle it in the smaller bottles or you can flavor the smaller bottles and try it out that way you're not wasting the big batches but yeah Alcohol is a tricky thing, uh, especially if you're not drinkers um, and you don't, I just don't like the flavor of alcohol. I don't like that bite. So that's why I ended up down on this end. And yeah, I don't use these hard alcohols. That's why they're still here. Uh, cooking maybe, but yeah. Anyway, that's where I'm at. I hope that answered some of your guys' questions on alcohols and the different types. Um, personally, I stay with the, the good vodkas and 
and the good rums, the more the clear and so forth, to start up with your with your vanilla extracts. Um, but yeah. So if you have any questions, I try to always answer the comments as soon as I can. Um, because I know there's stuff that I've missed. But go ahead and uh, put put your comments down below. You can message me if you want. Uh, I'll try to answer your any, as much as your questions as possible. So thanks, and we'll wait for the next video.